This podcast contains explicit language and content and is for mature audiences only. Hey, you teenagers out there. If you're under 18, this show is more for your parents. So now that you have that mental picture stuck in your head, put some music on and get back to doing your homework. We are a longtime married couple who's decided to chronicle our personal adventures and share our sex-positive discussions as we navigate our way through the swinging lifestyle. Care to join us? Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Jones. And I'm Mrs. Jones. And we want to welcome you to episode 15 of the We Got a Thing podcast. It's a Thursday night. We are so busy doing lifestyle stuff. We don't have time to podcast about lifestyle stuff on the weekend. Uh, It's not just lifestyle stuff. It's been work stuff and family stuff and all kinds of stuff. But um, here we are. It seems like it's been forever, but it's only been a month. Yeah, but it's been a busy month. Yeah, and right away I need to uh, thank everyone. We put a shout out um, and a call out for email last episode, and boy, did you all respond. I think we got more emails this past month than we've gotten the past 11 months prior to that. I know, it's been really fun getting everybody's messages. There's been so many amazing stories that we have uh, been given by all of our listeners, and it's so much fun to read them. Yeah, and we've been able to keep up, um, so if... Hopefully you all are getting a response from us. Mrs. Jones has read them all and I've responded to them all. And so, um, and part of tonight's episode is, is titled if we only knew then, and we chose that title because the tone of the, the stories that people were sending us gives us a really good idea of who's listening and what their backgrounds are. And so we, um, this topic came about from a lot of people commenting that, you know, they were either just getting into the lifestyle or fairly new to the lifestyle. So what we've done tonight when we get to our topic is we've kind of taken um, a lessons learned approach now that, you know, we have some experience under our belt. We are not experienced by any means, but I, I guess we're more experienced than we were a couple of years ago. So we've kind of consolidated um, some like big overarching topics that people keep asking us about. And, I, and actually... I've got to confess, we've probably addressed most of this stuff in our prior podcast, but we're just kind of bringing it all together and right. kind of um, doing some some bullet points just to kind of help people kind of know the the ins and outs of the relationship aspect of lifestyle and the, and the sexy fun aspect of the lifestyle. Right. So um, let's get on with uh, keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. And this month is I'm declaring this month our anniversary month. Yes, that's because our wedding anniversary was actually two days ago. So 31 years of... Oh, 31, of, yeah. 31, yeah. yes. You knew that. I you knew. didn't even have to pull off your wedding band to look. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, so 31 years married, and it's also our swing anniversary. Uh, next month will be exactly two years since we had our first adventure in the lifestyle, though I don't really think we qualified as to being in the lifestyle until about 18 months ago. But right. two two years ago was our very first experience. Yes. And it's also our podcast anniversary. And that's the one Mr. Jones is the most excited about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's had to celebrate our wedding anniversary 31 times now, but this is his first ever podcast anniversary. Well, it's, it's our first ever. <laughs> we made we made 14 episodes yeah. and 12, you know, 12 one each month and two bonus episodes. So we did what we committed to do. Yeah. And uh And we're I, still having fun. Yeah, we're still having fun. So, I went on a run this afternoon when I got home from work, and you know what I did? No. I listened to episode 1. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we were so nervous. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully um, we're a little bit more entertaining than we were a year ago. And, and thank you for sticking with us if you started with us at episode one. Yeah. Um, obviously, we had a little bit of growing to do. Yeah, a lot of podcasters talk about whether they should go back, you know, after they've been doing it a couple of years to go back and redo their first episodes. But I don't know, I'm from the camp that you're going to just have to suffer through and, <laughs> and grow with us because hopefully now you can compare, you know, a year ago to ne- where we are now. We sound a little bit 
more together, I think, than we were when we started. Well, I think we're a little more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like the whole wedding anniversary, too. I mean, our first year of marriage, you know. You, we didn't you, know what the hell we were doing. <laughs> we, we don't want to go back and do that again. No. Either. Yeah. So we've been up to quite a bit. Um, where do we want to start with our list of things. Well, if we go chronologically, we went to another awesome house party. Yes. And this was the same couple that hosted uh, way back in episode. I don't know what episode it was. That was what, it was April. Yeah. It was last spring that we talked about. Um, yeah. Because that, that was the night that we flew home from our cruise and had to do yeah. like the jump in the shower and get oh, ready yeah, in yeah. five minutes. And we were still like the second to the last couple there. Yeah. And that was the guy with the dick and the devil. Eggs. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the same couple hosted a party and they were gracious enough to invite us back and we were in town. And so we had advanced preparation and we didn't have to rush. We got there early and we knew there were a couple, two or three couples there that, that we knew. And so this Second time around was much easier than the first time around. But I have to say, I think house parties are becoming one of my favorite things, events in the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's the right size for us. I think there were, what, like 20 couples there? Yes. 20-ish. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot for, you know, a home. Right. And But it was nice. I mean, you could still move around and, and they did their, their, you know, downstairs was the dungeon and the massage tables and, you know, the beautiful dining room table just full of food that people had brought to share and and then the upstairs they did the exact same thing they turned their their um owner suite into this like big group playroom that was just wild and crazy and fun but then they had their three guest rooms upstairs turned into these really intimate venues right. where you could do some private play so they you know they just they they know how to meet the needs of all types of swingers and they and i think they always invite people that are like brand new and they're very good in the in the in emails when they send out the invites to remind the more experienced people that there will be new people there and that we need to, you know, not scare them to death. <laughs> yeah. And they also said in the email that the, the second floor was a floor for socializing and you were supposed to have your clothes on. Yes. So I think that took And that's care where of the them. dining room table and the deviled eggs were. <laughs> yeah. Th- this was a fairly uneventful time around the table except for the gentleman with the rather large belly that would that didn't have a shirt on but that was much better than last time yes yeah so, people were well behaved and um sexy and fun yeah so we met um we met a couple uh, a couple of couples that we had not met before so we were able to reconnect with people that we did know and walk the room for a bit and meet some people that we didn't know and uh, we ended up well do you want to what did we do first? We went downstairs. To well, the, when we started playing, yeah, yeah that we went downstairs. But it, we hung around in the kitchen for a long time, and we met a couple that um, they there was a house party in August that we were invited to that we couldn't come to because that was when we were at the beach on vacation, and this um, other couple that we met they had gone to the August party, and I think that was one of their very very first lifestyle events. So they are still a very brand new couple and they actually live in our town, which is pretty cool. So we ended up talking to them for a long time. And then we ran into good friends of ours that we have uh, spent time with before. And um, they kind of spilled the beans that we have a podcast because we were trying to keep it on the down low. (laughs) That's okay. But it's fine. I mean, it, it, you know, it's just, it's going to get out. It's, It's just... You know, when it comes up in conversation, we're certainly not going to deny it and, and be all right. uptight about it. So anyway, this this uh, new couple, we ended up talking to them for a long time. And um, actually, they are coming over tomorrow night. Yeah. And we are going to have some good conversation and... and um, get to know them better. Yeah, just get to know them better. Right. So we ended up um, going down and using the massage tables. Yes. Yeah, they had three. I think they had three set up. Yeah, they did. And they had all the coconut oil and the 
Oh, they had every kind Almond of oil, oil. All the, a couple of essential oils, and they just had candles. They had big white fluffy bathrobes hanging on like a garment rack, so you could put the bathrobe on afterwards if you were all greasy. And right. our friends had bought brought a big thing of almond oil, right? And that's what we ended up using. And this was a good place to start, especially for the couple that was really new. Yeah, so we went downstairs. There were six of us. We went downstairs with our friends that we know pretty well, and then this new couple that we met. And um, decided to take turns on the massage table. And that was really fun. Yeah, it was fun. We we went. the The ladies were had a, an advantage because you could have what two, I had four, ten six, hands eight, ten on hands. me at once. But then when the guys, oh my gosh. when the guys switched out, then the other two guys had to sit out. Yeah, and, and just watch. You only had six hands on you. Six sexy hands on you. I know, but you had ten. Well, whatever. <laughs> so. It's rough being a girl. <laughs> yeah, so we did that for a while. That was that was amazing. Really a good mood setter and yeah, icebreaker for everything. Yeah, it really was. So we um, just took. It was kind of boy girl, boy girl, wasn't it? Yeah. I think. I don't think the new couple actually got up on the massage table, but they were touching all of us. Yes. And um, a good time was had by all. It definitely uh, made me want to go all the way up to the third floor after that. Right. <laughs> I was ready to go. So we did go up to the third floor after that. Yeah, we just did. just us and our friends. Um, the new couple decided that they would just kind of wander around a little bit more and just kind of take in all the, the sights and experiences, which was good for them. Right. And we went upstairs and found a room uh, that was empty, and the four of us did... Um, soft swap, which was wonderful. Yes. It was perfect. I, and again, this was, we, we talked about what we wanted to do and what everyone was comfortable with. And then everyone went to that level and we had a good time. A really we did have time. a good time. Yeah. Although I had a problem again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you had been waiting to play with her for a while. Yes, I had. You had been really looking forward to well, it. Well, not only that, I, when, when we were doing the massages, I was standing behind her when she was massaging you. Oh, that's right, you, right. And, it, you know, I had been quite ready to go for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> and and actually, at one point in time, you only had nine hands on you. Oh, where was your other hand, yeah, so Mr. Jones? It was on her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I couldn't help myself. Oh, that was a little true confession. I, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't think you'd notice one less hand. No, with, with I, ten. yeah, yeah so nine, I, ten, yeah, whatever. Was rubbing her back and other parts. Actually, Mr. Jones was rubbing my feet during that massage. And that doesn't sound very That sexy. was the only real estate left. <laughs> <laughs> but that felt really, really good. Yeah. So I appreciated you because yeah. nobody else was going to rub my feet. Now I've learned so. how to do that because it, it used to tickle you, but yeah, I've learned how to do that. Yeah. You got quite the grip. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so upstairs we um we had fun. We were all nice and slippery. That was for sure. Right. Uh, with all that almond oil on us. Yeah. And so anyway, back to my problem. <laughs> I know. Well, you do have a problem because then you're you get like all worked up and you can't stand it, and the poor lady can't even like get near you anymore because you're about ready to die. And then you wanted to switch back with me, and I was like, <clears throat> Well, okay. <laughs> well, you weren't done with him. I was not done with him. No. That's so. okay. I got. I got it. I got it under control for next time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what you say every time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do have the hardest time in group setting. I mean, in not, it's all group settings, but when, the, when there's that much going on, like at, you know, the new year's party and naughty in new Orleans, when there's just so much, you know, yeah, it's just like information yeah, overload. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Next time it's going to be, I got it. I got it. I okay. Got it, I got it. All right. I'm good. Stay tuned, listeners. I will yeah. fill you in. You will know the truth. Yeah, I got it. I think I was almost ready to have an orgasm before I got completely hard. <laughs> it was a weird sensation. That's right. You told me that. That yeah. was part of our pillow and, talk. And it... You tried I, to explain it. I was microseconds away from orgasm. I, I mean, one, <laughs> one more millisecond and it would have been over because I was like, oh, please no. Oh, please no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, phew, thank goodness. <laughs> Oh, and I was having so much fun with him. I know. Not that I didn't want to be with you, of course, but no. we were having a good time. No, I uh, blame her. She's too sexy. <laughs> she is very sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel your pain with that one. Right. Of course, he was very sexy too. So, yeah, so we'll just have to play with him again. Well, okay. Oh, and you know what? 
Oh, we could do that Saturday night. Yeah, we're going to see them at the Halloween party. Yes, we are. Yeah, so anyway, that was a great time, and we went back downstairs after that. And you know what I noticed also is, uh, you know, you go to like family potlucks and uh, vanilla parties where everybody has to bring an appetizer. And you know when you're the host, you always have more food left than when you started at the swinger party and the house party, the food is gone. Well, yeah, because everybody's hungry exactly. at one o'clock in the morning. I mean, people were munching everything. And, I and know. you had made that baked brie, two and plates it, of it. Two plates of and baked brie, time and it was gone. Got, by the time we got back downstairs, <laughs> it was gone. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to see people, I mean, re, you know, re- re-energizing themselves. I know. You work up an appetite. Burning those calories. Having sex for a couple of hours. Yeah. So anyway, that's the house party. That was so fun. Yeah, we, we hope we get invited back. So the very next day, we had our friends that um, they live in Florida, and they had come up for a family wedding, and we know these uh, this couple from Desire, and they were um, stayed actually they stayed an extra day so they could come down and visit us, and we ended up having the best time. It was, you know. They, lifestyle friends are the best you can go months and months without seeing them and you know the doorbell rings and we just pick up the conversation where it left off last june when we were sitting around the hot tub with them Mm -hmm. so oh my gosh we had so much fun yeah when we hope to get down to return the favor yes they have invited us down to florida so we could uh, jet down in the winter and thaw out a little bit and uh, they live i guess in a area where they can walk to amazing restaurants and bars and we took them to a microbrewery when they were here and um, they had never really done that before so they just uh, facebooked me the other day and said hey and they sent a picture of the beautiful wife drinking a, on their anniversary a, on their anniversary yeah and she, she was, was drinking beer had this gorgeous sexy dress on and she was drinking a beer yeah. so they they uh, realized that they have some cool breweries down there as well so and we talked about them before because they're um we talked about the levels of lifestyle and people email and us have said well i don't think i'm officially in the lifestyle i have a new like measure to know whether or not somebody's in the lifestyle i think this is an actually really good indicator yeah if you can hand your phone to somebody (laughs) with the pictures open and you don't care what pictures they flip through they're in the lifestyle right so think about that if you if you think somebody that's that's a good indicator i think i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with that one because they don't they don't play with other couples but we i managed to uh play around with her just a little bit when we were in desire yeah it involved some tequila and liqueur 43 right yeah so, so that was fun and then was we, very fun. we went to a meet and greet yes last saturday night in northern virginia yep and i loved this meet and greet because there were what maybe what eight couples there you know, I, yeah. I think it was like eight couples and, you know, it was an upstairs bar of a restaurant and it was kind of a, you know, a sports bar area, but we had really half the room to ourselves and it was great because you, we, there was room to get up and walk around. There was a, a couple that just moved to the area um, from out of the country and they didn't know anybody. So that was really fun. You know, I was glad that they were brave enough to just sign up and, and dive in and, and it was really fun getting to know them. Yep. So, and they're going to the, uh, several of the couples that were there last weekend are going to the Halloween party this but weekend. The best thing about the meet and greet, what we had family in town for the weekend <laughs> and we snuck out. Yes. On my, Saturday night. my dad was here from out of town and, and we love my dad, but it was fun to sneak away. Yes. Made it bearable. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then the last thing. In this segment is we had the good fortune of being able to have dinner and meet one of our listeners from the West Coast. Yes. Yeah, she um, had corresponded with us through email, and they were from the San Francisco area, and she was going to be uh, traveling without her husband uh, on business and was going to be in town for one night and emailed us, and we went up to D.C. and had dinner with her. Yep. And it was a lot of fun. Yep, on our anniversary, no less. Yeah, the three of us celebrated <laughs> yeah. our anniversary. So Mr. Jones got to spend the anniversary with his imaginary unicorn. Well, yeah. she wasn't imaginary, but no, the unicorn part was imaginary. She was very real. I think you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, we had a great conversation. I mean, it's, and again, along with the emails and meeting people like that, it's really um, great to 
get to know people who listen to us and who know a lot about us, and it gives us a chance to sit there and eat and drink while she talks well, right, because she already knows like a whole lot about us. Right. So she got to share, you know, her adventure. Right. And it's very, it's two different dynamics. I'm learning, you know, when we went out to dinner with her and when we go out with people that know we podcast, it's one way, but like at that, um, at the meet and greet and at the house party, we're incognito. Gosh, we've been up to a lot and, and we've got a Halloween party coming up this weekend. So we'll have a lot to talk about yep. next month as well. And a, and a couple dates set up with um, some friends. Right. So when we come back, we are going to go right into our topic, If We Only Knew Then. tonight is really um, like newbie one on 101 um, it's the title of our podcast this month is if we only knew then so what we're doing is we kind of come up came up with a three basic categories of things topics that we wish we would have known ahead of time to at least discuss as we were uh, dipping our toes in the lifestyle so our three basic topics are you know, how does a lifestyle affect your relationship? How does um, fitting into the lifestyle feel and, and work for you? So the actual, the, the lifestyle itself and, and where you belong in it. And then finally, you know, what is playtime like? What does it take to have a successful playtime with um, other people, whether it's an individual or a couple? So those are our three basic topics that we're going to tackle. Right. In the context of this conversation, if we only knew then. So this is like current day Mr. and Mrs. Jones talking back to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones a year and a half to two years ago. Right. So if we could give ourselves advice. Uh, this, this is the is advice the, we needed. <laughs> yes. Right. And still need. <laughs> right. So it's based around our experiences and not necessarily others, but based on the communication we've had with others, we think that it will resonate with some people too. Right. So, so the first big category we're going to tackle is um, your relationship. Right. How does the lifestyle affect your relationship? So our first piece of advice is that you need to decide as a couple what you want from the lifestyle. So in other words, what's your thing? Right. And so you have to talk about, I remember us talking about our relationship, first of all, and, and, and wondering, you know, how strong is our relationship? Is, is it, you know, is it strong enough for this risk? Um, but, but as we were fantasizing about this, or maybe discussing it and researching it, we had to decide, you know, is this something that we really want to do? Or is this something that we just want to talk about and use for pillow talk and for, you know, getting each other energized because at first that's how it kind of started. Right. And then we got to a point and we realized we were going down this slippery slope and we never really, you know, took the time to pause and say, you know, is this something that we really want to do? And I think because of that, we got back from desire and our heads were spinning because we really hadn't had that level of conversation. Well, I think it, I think we asked ourselves that question, but we didn't know how to answer right. it. Yeah, I that's mean, right. I mean, you know, right. I, I think we were trying to be really thoughtful, but we didn't know enough about the lifestyle to understand, right. you know, where, what all the potential um, benefits could be from it and right. what, and what the pit, we, I think we kind of knew the pitfalls. I mean, it, it can screw up your relationship, right? but if you, if you know what the benefits are, I think it makes you more willing to take some risks. Mm-hmm. So that's the first one. Um, the second one is decide what you want to get out of it as an individual. And I think Mr. Jones and I were terrible about this at first. I think we were so focused on our relationship as a couple. I don't think either one of us, 
I honestly don't think we were brave enough to take the time to do self-reflection and, and be selfish. Okay, this is my body. I'm going to be experiencing sexual pleasure that I'm going to receive from people other than my spouse. And how do I feel about that? And honestly, what do I really want? And how do you say that? I, and I remember I really struggled with this because I kept saying, oh, well, I want to see you with another woman. That, that's what I kept saying. That's, and, and it was really hard for me to tell you, oh, I'd really like to have sex with another woman because after that long being together, that I would... I never even thought about it. And then, and then to verbalize that to you, to tell you that, I just would think, oh gosh, that's, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this or not, if this is something I want to do. So I shied away from it. I didn't really come out and say what I wanted. And you, at one point in time, and I think this was after we were well into the lifestyle, you know, you kind of called me out on that and you said, you need to tell me what you want out of this as an individual. And I hadn't thought of it that way before. I mean, you looked at me like I had like two heads or something. When I asked you that question, you totally did not understand right. what I was asking you. Right. You just kept saying, I want to see you experience pleasure. Well, that's not you, you know? I mean, so yeah, that was, I think that was eye opening because you finally had that aha moment well, that you could be in this for your own pleasure. Right. And what that did for me then when it's just the two of us, it allows me to be more selfish with you now because before I wasn't I you know I my my main I derived my pleasure from seeing you have pleasure and so when you asked me what I want it always involved you and so when I thought of myself with another woman I, I didn't even know how to answer that question so it was really difficult but I'll tell you what I can answer it now I know you can well you know what I remember thinking at first was if I tell you that I want to know what it feels like to have another man's cock inside me. I I was so afraid that that would be hurtful to you. Right. Because you would think, oh my gosh, I'm not meeting a need of hers. Or, you know, I'm not, you know, exciting enough when we have sex or, or, or whatever. And, of course, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's just, it's exciting to think about having something different happen to you. Right. And then when we had the jealousy episode, it was it made it harder even for you after that to tell me what you wanted because you were afraid I was going to, you know, go through that again. And fortunately I didn't, but it's really critical that you, um, that you decide what you want as a couple and that you decide as an individual, what is it that I want to, what Mr. Jones, what am, what do I want when I'm with another woman? What am I going to get out of this? And, you know, that, that was a real eye opening experience for me. And then the, uh, the next thing that we have um, on our list is that not only do you have to decide that, now you have to communicate it to your partner. And you, at, as a partner, you not only do you have to communicate how you feel to your other partner, but you also have to accept what your partner tells you and not think critically of either your partner or your own expertise, I guess. Yeah, you know? let's just it, say this. Um, and I don't mean to give advice, but... And, and I'm thinking back to us. If you can't answer that question, it's probably not the right time to to take the next step. If if I can't, if you if you're going to tell me that you like having another man's cock in you, and I and and that does make me very very uncomfortable, then then it's probably not something we need to be doing. Right. You know, we and if you know, I need to. You need to trust me enough that um, in telling me that, that I am going to understand that you're having fun with somebody and it's a hobby, but it's not interfering with our relationship. Right. So it it either means it, it should give you a very clear signal as to if you are going to get in the lifestyle, then certain things are off limits and you need to lower the bar and take an, a baby step in because, um, you know, if you... And we've we've received messages from a lot of people who and we and we did that. I mean, we had a false start too. So really, I'm talking to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. If you can't, this if, episode is yeah. really for us. <laughs> yeah. If if we we should not have, we should not have jumped in the way that we did because no. we weren't prepared. But anyway. Well, and but it's again, it's lessons learned. It we're not telling people to never make a mistake. 
Right. We're just saying this is the kind of stuff that you need to consider along the way. And it's not like you only need to do this once and never have to do it again. Right. I think we all need to spiral back every time we have a, a different experience and, right. and just make sure that we're still on in step with each other. Yeah. So clearly, if you, you would need to say to me, I want to know what it's like to have another man's cock in me. And I have to be able to say, oh, yeah, that sounds really hot. <laughs> if that's not the way the conversation goes. And you stay soft swap for a while. Yeah, probably need to take it down a notch <laughs> yeah. and, and, and slow the pace down a little right. bit. And that's okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is I wish really we, okay. I wish we would have done that. <laughs> and you can still have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can get, you can recover from it. We did. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So the next thing that um, we think that we want to share with you guys is um, make certain that you are both moving forward at the same pace. Um, if one person is more outwardly enthusiastic than the other, it's n- it's not even that you know th- one person wants to do it and the other person doesn't. But if one person is just so excited and more enthusiastic and and more outgoing, sometimes the other person gets left in the dust, and that can really cause issues. And also, it can also be um, a little off-putting to people that you're trying to play with because other people can pick up on that. Yeah, we, we do. We, we pick up, up on that. And we're, we're more than happy to go to the pace of the person of the foursome that's at the slowest pace. But if we see the other spouse not considering that person as well, then we're not comfortable playing with somebody who is vulnerable and may not enjoy the experience because they're not quite ready. So just be aware that if you've already talked to your partner and you've agreed that you're in different places, then when you go out, you have to live that. Yes. You know, if, and and in my case, let me just talk about us. I was the one that was slow. And and this is where I think we did do a good job. You, you, you agreed, you said, okay, whatever you want to do is, is fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. And when we went out, I, I never felt any, I never felt like you were getting ahead of me and I never felt pressured or bad. And I, and even when we told people that we were soft swap, I never thought it was three against one. You know, you, right, you were right. always there right beside me. So in this case, I think we did that one well. Uh, but we've noticed it in other couples that somebody is a, just a little bit pulling the other person along, and that's a red flag for us. We really don't want to be involved with that because it's not going to be fun. And it may be okay, and it may be that that's a growing experience for them, but we just don't want to take that chance with somebody and, and not have it be a fun experience. Well, not even fun. I'm I'm just like, maybe I'm overly sensitive. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, I if, if I end up not having fun because things don't go right, you know, that... We just kind of brush ourselves off and get up and, and move on. But that other couple has a mess to clean up, you know, and I don't want to cause an emotional mess for anybody or, or participate in an emotional mess. Not that we would be causing it because their imbalance is really the issue at hand. But it's just, I don't know. I just really hope that they find a way to communicate enough to get on the same page. And it's also important to remember that the slower person's responsibility is to speak up right, and tell the other spouse that they're not comfortable with something and set that limit. So if you don't, if you know, so it's not necessarily the person out in front, it's not necessarily their mistake. It could be that the spouse or their partner hasn't really been honest with them. But as soon as you're in a real situation, I'm telling you, the microscope, I mean, it's just magnified and, right. and, and everybody's real, you know, hormones are raging and, and everybody's, you know, trying to get connected and it's really a hot kind of environment. And when somebody else and somebody's off, it's real easy to see that. So, you know, talk about it before you get into that situation and all of a sudden you got this panic that you, that you have to deal with. So this next one is all mine. Okay. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Not every man we are with will want to leave his wife for mine. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) And I know you roll your eyes. Yep, they're rolling right now. When I say that, but I'm so like gaga over you. He's blind. (laughs) That 
I, and, and this has been true for as long as we've been married. Whenever we're out with somebody else, I'm thinking, these poor people, I mean, they must just go home and be depressed because they don't have you and I, and I have you. <laughs> <laughs> and so as irrational as that sounds, I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. And, I'm, and so therefore that mindset was when I share you with somebody, they're going to realize this is going to sound funny. <laughs> They're going to say, oh my gosh, I've been married 25 years to the wrong person. Mrs. Jones is the one for me. Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, you know, when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but th that's how I felt. I felt like you were so special to me that everyone else was going to think that you were, you know, that they couldn't help themselves. You were going to cast the same spell and then that you did me. But what have you learned over the past year, darling? That every husband feels that way. So far. So miss, let's say Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mr. Smith feels that way about Mrs. Smith. Yes. If yes. I let Mr. Jones play with Mrs. Smith, he's going right. to realize that Mrs. Smith has the, always been the woman right. for him. And it's been, it's been a comfort on both sides. So I've been able to enjoy watching you with another man, but I've also been able to enjoy being with the other woman. Because right. the same thing, you know, I've, I, I always felt the same way about the other woman. She's very precious and... And, you know, so I'm able to... And her to, husband is trusting you. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right. So, oh, yeah, it's all good now. Yeah. But honestly, that's... The, I was really struggling with that at, yep. at first. And that wedding ring is still firmly on my finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you've proven over and over again. You keep coming home with me. That's right. So by this point in time, I think I'm stuck with you. Yeah, I, you're definitely stuck with me. I'm yeah. not going anywhere. Right. All right. You taking the next one? So at the end of the day, you've got to protect yourself and your relationship. That was a perfect segue into this one. Right. It's all about us. So no matter what, even if you have talked, and this kind of reminds me of the, the whole group room incident at Naughty in New Orleans when you just shut down and you said, I need to leave, you know, and we talked about that. And um, so I think the message there to us beginning was, whenever either one of you is in a situation where you don't feel comfortable, just politely but firmly play that card. That's and say, right. And, and no matter what, just say, you know what? I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable and I'm going to have to excuse myself. And, you know, you all keep going or, you know, I'm sorry, but I just, it's not the best thing right now. And you did that. And, and you said afterwards, you know, even though I didn't know what was going on, I knew that the most important thing was, um, you know, we need to be selfish and, and we need to remove ourselves. So, I mean, you, I know you don't ever want to hurt anybody else's feelings, but whenever you, you feel like something is not, um, kosher or somebody's intentions aren't right at the end of the day, your, your relationship with your spouse has to be the priority. And if you hurt somebody else's feelings, that's sad, but, um, I mean, my spouse is the most important thing to me and I don't want to ever do anything to hurt him or to, you know, like hurt my image that he has of me because, you know, how you feel about me and how you perceive me is very important. Yeah. And you're very good at that too, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so most of what we just talked about was prior to getting in the lifestyle or just getting into the lifestyle, and they were all based on things that you needed to think about as a couple and individuals and how it, that would affect your relationship. Now we're going to shift into once you start into the lifestyle, and you know, here are some things that we wished somebody would have had a podcast about that we would <laughs> That we would have listened to that would have told us, you know, pretty clearly about this. So the first one is, and, and I hear this a lot, and I'm going to put a little bit of a modifier on this, and it's called taking one for the team. And everybody has, well, not everybody, there are many different opinions as to what this really means. And that, and, and I'll let you talk to other people and listen to other podcasts to hear that. But what we've learned is that Taking one for the team is a sliding scale. So there's all the way over on this uh, direction, on this He's using his left on hand. On this <laughs> axis, <laughs> on the x-axis. <laughs> you know, there's, I, I don't want to play with you at all. 
Right. And then over here on the right is, oh my gosh, you're so hot. I can't wait to get into your pants. So that, that's the perspective. <laughs> that was classy. Yeah. So it, we're finding that we've had really, really good experiences with just about everybody that we've played with. But we've also, we've also learned that when we come away from an experience with another couple, one of the two of us may have a stronger connection with the other person in a couple than right. the other one of us. And because there are those three factors we talked about, you know, physical attractiveness, personality, and the strength of the relationship. The tripod of attractiveness. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> copyright, Mr. Jones. So I think generally speaking, we're all of the time, we're always, we're always in sync with the strength of the relationship and the personalities. It's the physical part of it that, that I think, you know, isn't as important as the other two put together. But um, we've both said at times, you know, I really enjoyed playing with them. Um, and if we do again, that's fine. But if not, I don't, you know, it's not that, that physical attraction might not have been the strongest. Right. And we've both come away from situations and we both have said, yes, I would play with that couple again, even though my connection with the wife the other wife might not be as strong as your connection with the husband. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. We've had it happen both ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I will do that for you. And, it, and, and I don't mean this to make it sound like it's taken one for the team because it's not. But, but you all know when, when you click and there's chemistry with somebody and you just think about them and I want to be with them. And sometimes that's there and sometimes it, it's not there. And there's, I don't think there's anything you can do about that. That's just how we're wired and how we connect to other people. Right. So we believe that it's, I like doing, it's a gift to Mrs. Jones and vice versa, but it's not to the point where I have to fake it or I don't want to be with the person. It's just that that level of connection is not exactly on the same place. And with four people, that's so hard. Virtually impossible. Virtually impossible yeah. to achieve. But I, you know, I, I've never played with a man that I haven't wanted to play with. You know, it, it, might have been nice and it might have been fun um and you might be over there completely oblivious to the whole rest of the world because you're having like this mind-blowing time or vice versa i mean it there's been times right. i've been totally totally caught up in a guy and you've had fun with the wife but you know afterwards i'm like oh my gosh and you were like yeah i had fun you know and i'm still like heart palpitating and stuff right. And I don't say this to be, it's no. not a negative at all. No. I enjoy being with the right. other woman. Right. It's just that when we compare notes, and now that I've been on that side of it too, I mean, we've played with couples where I've just really wanted to be with the other woman, and you had fun with the man, but you could tell, you would say, oh my gosh, I could tell you were really into her. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, and that's just a part of it. And right. and I think whether you're on the giving or the receiving end, you know, that, that that's just reality. And, right. So I guess our advice to ourselves from a year ago is is it doesn't have to be this perfect, perfect balance. You're right. still going to have a good time. And you're still, I mean, I there's really very, very, very few couples that we've played with that I would say that I do not want to play with again. I mean, yeah. I've enjoyed myself yeah. so much. Yep. You know, and, you know, maybe it would be different next time too. Yeah. You know, maybe there was just a little bit of shyness or whatever. Right. And that, that might not be an issue the second time That's you play a good with point. a couple. That's so a good point. Maybe you don't write them off. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, just sleeping with somebody once, you're, you're not going to know how to push their buttons anyway. No, no, right. So you're right. It may be the second or the third time. And if you shut yourself down and say, well, no, it wasn't a good experience or it was so-so, then you're missing the opportunity to you know, to find that connection. So right. that's, that's a good point. Get it right the second time. Yeah. Right. So yeah, just remember it's a sliding scale and you kind of just have to be open-minded about that. Yep. Okay. So, so next. Be open to new things. You know, we were firmly a soft swap couple. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. And it's just great. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm impressed with, um, correspondence that we've gotten from people that say that uh, and and most people who have been in a relationship for a while even if they're new to the lifestyle will say i can't imagine doing a full swap however i have enough experience in life to know that you never say never and we're doing things now that we 
a year ago would have not ever thought was was possible. Right. So always be open to new things, and and that has to be defined by you. Right. And the thing about Mrs. Jones, you know, you don't. You don't. You claim you don't fantasize, and so we don't have the advantage of talking ahead of time about what you want to do. You know, we kind of have to just get into the situation and then let things happen. So you, you, we have to be open to new things in the moment instead of talking about new things ahead of time. So can I share a little story right now? I'm, I'm yeah. kind of like well, going have, off on a tangent, yeah. but. It's my podcast. If I want to break off yes. on a tangent, I will. I know. It's your podcast. I'm, I'm just the tech. I'm <laughs> That's sound right. Guy. That's right. So in episode 14, when Mr. Jones interviewed me, he asked me what my thing was. And, and right now my thing is I really enjoy when we play with other couples. That's, that's just my happy place. I love it when we can find that connection. And I've said that I'm not really interested in playing with either single males or unicorns, but I have a single male that is somewhat pursuing me. No kidding. (laughs) I do. Um, And it's a listener. So he has sent very, very thoughtful emails. And kind of, um, he sent me a gift. Well, I kind of have to share the gift with Mr. Jones, and that's okay. But um, in my mind, in my fantasy mind, I think the gift was for me. Mm -hmm. So, and he's just, um, he's an extreme gentleman. He's intelligent. Um, he's very open. He's, he's, um, shared a lot about himself and I think in his way, he, and he has not explicitly said this, but I think he's just trying to share with me that not all single males are creepy stalkerish guys. And, um, you know, I, and I have no right to label single males that way because I've never met one. I haven't even been brave enough to put myself out there enough to um, pursue a single male for Mr. Jones and I to play with. So be open to new things. Maybe the writing's on the wall. I don't know. (laughs) Is this supposed to be, you're making something pretty obvious to me? Are you going to come out and say it or do I have to just assume that? I I didn't say it. I'm just saying I'm being somewhat wooed by a single male and I'm not opposed to it. Okay, but as husband and wife of 31 years, this is one of these things where I would normally go, okay, what I'm hearing you say. (laughs) Well, I also feel very safe in saying this because he lives pretty much on the other side of the country. (laughs) He does not live in our town. Well, that's okay. I'm I'm glad that you are open to new things. That's right. Never say never. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right. And what I wonder if I could wonder what kind of open. I don't know what I'd be open to. I'd, hey, there we go. Now you got to think about it. I know, but you need to talk to me. You need to help t- me talk about it. Right now? No, not right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stay tuned. Just because you don't fantasize, it doesn't mean I don't fantasize. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I know you fantasize. Yeah. All right. Is this one yours or mine? Accept your flaws and don't justify them. So. I don't have any. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Because you don't think sarcasm is a flaw. No. Oh, you think it's, it's a, a gift, don't yeah, it's you? It's a talent. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so this is my bullet. And what I meant by accept your flaws and don't justify them. Sometimes, and, and this really pertains to women more than men probably. You know, we we are so critical of ourselves, which is ridiculous because... You know, we're all human beings and our bodies age as we age and we give birth to babies and and nobody really comes through that unscathed without either Photoshop or a cosmetic surgeon. And we're just so critical of ourselves. And then, you know, if we don't weigh what we want to weigh, if we don't have the muscle tone that we want to have, we we try to justify it. And, And then we tend to be upset when we're not as pursued as we want to be pursued or, you know, if if we're criticized and, and I've heard and other women upset about that and they, and they try to justify it and justifying it really doesn't fix the problem. And I'm not saying you need to fix the problem by going and getting cosmetic surgery and losing a hundred pounds or, or whatever you need to lose. You need to just somehow make peace with yourself 
and and don't be defensive because I think when we're defensive about our flaws, which we all have, then the, being defensive is not sexy. Right. I guess that was a very long winded uh, winded way of saying that when you try to joke about your flaws or or justify them, it, it's just not sexy. So, do you mean if I can explain this a different way? Because you're being a little bit vague. Like, are you saying, if I'm having a conversation with you and I'm saying, oh, you know, I know I've gained some extra weight, or I know I need to lose weight, or I know, but I don't have time to exercise. And those people that spend life in the gym and those people that I don't have the time to eat a right, right diet, or are you, are you saying, instead of saying that, what I should do is, if, if I'm making these choices, and we all make choices in our lifestyle, we should just say, you know what? This is who I am. I'm not apologizing for it. I'm happy. I'm, I accept myself the way that I am, and I put myself out there, and knowing how that's going to affect, uh, you know, I'm, st- I'm still going to be attracted to certain people, and other, right, and other right. people are not going to be attracted to right. me. And that's just the way that it is. Right. I mean, you're not going to be attracted to anybody anyway, uh, everybody right? anyway, but there's going to be somebody. I think what you're saying is, and stop me if I'm not right, is you're still going to have a better chance to connect with somebody if you just accept, you know, your decisions and your lifestyle and be yourself and be confident with yourself. If you're comfortable with yourself, that's attractive. Right. But don't look at other people that you perceive to be flawless and make a judgment statement about them, you know, either, because that's not attractive either. Right. And nor should you do the other way around. If you are in shape and fit, you know, you don't need to say anything about people that aren't, because if you're not attracted to them, you're not attracted to them. You just, you know, you just go on you right. know, and, and try to find the people that, it, that it, because the lifestyle is full of all, all, all types of people. And the, and the bottom line, this is so hard to say, but, but I think I can say this because, you know, my major flaw is that I'm kind of old. I mean, I, I'm in my 50s. And yeah, I'm starting to get wrinkles. And I can't do anything about that. That I don't think I need to go get a facelift just because I'm in my 50s. I don't think I need to fix it. I am who I am. And if, and if somebody's not attracted to me because I'm, my, I'm starting to age, then that's okay move on. I'm going to find somebody more my age that will find me attractive and will appreciate the fact that I really do. I mean, yeah, I have wrinkles, but I am working hard to stay height, weight proportional, you know, and stay physically fit so that I have, you know, a and somewhat attractive body and that, Hey, I have stamina. (laughs) You know, Right. That's the good thing about being a runner. So yeah, just ignore my wrinkles and appreciate my stamina, I guess. But we all have our good and bad points. And I think that um, sometimes we're just, we get too caught up in that. And, and that's really natural because taking your clothes off in front of people is terrifying. Yeah. You know, so, so newbies out there, you know, that if you're terrified to take your clothes off in front of people, that's very normal. Right. But, you know, after you do it a few times and you realize that nobody else at this house party or nobody else in this club has a perfect body either. Right then it's okay. Well, and it's also not a good idea to say, let me make sure I say this right. You know, saying something like, I need to get to a certain size before I get into the lifestyle. I've heard that. That, yeah. that really, you're, you're missing out on a lot. Right. We know a lot of people in the lifestyle, young, old, big, small. We have met some wonderful people who are large, Right, and, and they're older. gorgeous, and they're gorgeous. And they have the most fun, Yes, and you're missing out on that. On the other hand, use the lifestyle. If it's going to motivate you to change the way that you eat or exercise, that, that's perfectly fine. I get that. And maybe once you get in, it's a motivator to do that, but, but, but internalize that and, and use it as a positive thing. Don't say, well, I'm going to wait until this happens until I'm this or until I'm that before I get in the lifestyle because that's not what the lifestyle is about. It's about all kinds of people and accepting. And, you know, and going back to the meet and greet, there were people of all ages, shapes, and sizes there. And we sat with many couples that we'd probably never play with. And 
and you know you have one impression of them physically when you and then when you sit down and talk with them all of a sudden they're like i'm really attracted to this right. person right i know you forget about those those things that we instantly judge people on and if you don't give yourself the opportunity to talk with that person and get to know them then shame on you right and and i've learned to do that i've learned we're all going to have an instant opinion based on what we see and if you choose to walk away from that, that's on you. But if you choose to engage with the person just to talk and get to know them, you'll you'll probably notice that their level of attractiveness will change. And especially if they're really confident, you know, they're like, you know what, I can see myself with this person. I just like being around them. They're just really sexy and really confident. Right. And that's what it's about. You know, because we don't have a lot of clubs and, and, and those types of venues where we live, we have to do a lot of dating. So we, as if you've listened to our podcast before, you know, we rely on, um, on the, the lifestyle websites to meet people. And, you know, and I think that's really common, especially with newbies, because you don't know about all the events and this and that and the other to, to plug into. And so looking at those pictures on the websites is somewhat deceiving because again, that's just a one dimensional picture. Right of a person that has so much more to them. That's why we love to meet couples for drinks and dinner because then the personality comes out and and that's when the people become attractive. Right. So find your thing as a couple. Oh, so yes. How do you like to play? Do you like to go to clubs? Do you like the smaller meet and greets? Do you like to go to a house party? Do you like plowing through these lifestyle websites and finding couples that have good profiles and sexy pictures and, and meeting up for drinks and dinner. I mean, it, there's all these different ways to swing. Yes. And you have to be, well, what we did this right after we had to take a step back, we deliberately said, we're going to try everything to see what best suits us. And even the things that we didn't really like, like the large meet and greets, we learned something there. We've learned we've got to be a little bit more aggressive. We've got to learn how to approach people. So even though we may not like that, we do that on occasion just because we know it helps us grow as a couple. So and you don't rule something out because you think you might not like it. You know, if you're in the lifestyle, you should be open minded enough to look at these things and say, you know what, let's just try them all and see what works best for us. So don't make decisions or assumptions based on one or two experiences. Guilty. Yeah, we both are. So that kind of relates to the whole type of venue thing. You know, it, we talked about this before. Mr. Jones and I went to that large meet and greet um, last winter, and it was just overwhelming. It was too loud. It was too dark. We didn't know anybody, and it was just uncomfortable for us. But we know we need to try it again. And I bet you if we try it again, we're going to have a blast. And we've, we've done so much better at the larger events. Like we had so much fun in naughty New Orleans. And the New Year's Eve party was so much fun. And now we're going to go to the Halloween party. And I'm sure that's going to be a pretty big event. Or you might get the wrong couple the first time. The, the, the event or the situation might be right. But, yeah. you, but you might get a couple that all of a sudden has drama or or is doing something after the fact that really drives you crazy and you're you and you you could make the mistake of saying well if this is what the lifestyle is like yeah i don't want to be in it so if you commit to it for the long haul or or a period of time you know to give multiple cuz it's it's the luck of the draw you, you may be with somebody and the opposite is true you may be with like the perfect couple the first time and then your expectation is oh, oh the bar's everybody's going to be like this <laughs> and boy you're going to be in for a little bit of a letdown of that. so uh, that's the point is um you know don't make decisions based on just one or two experiences with yep. other couples shake it up yeah. shake it off and uh, try try again yeah, have fun with it i mean yeah. grow as a couple talk about it laugh about it and yeah you just have to laugh about it yeah. i mean you're always going to walk away with a good story if right. nothing else but it goes back to your relationship if you have a solid relationship you can laugh this stuff off and say you know what i screwed up <laughs> or boy that was a mistake or, yeah. or you know maybe that wasn't too bad but you know, to be able to just kind of bounce up, you know, stand back up and keep going. So um, use 
the last in this category is use negative experiences as a growth for opportunity. That's kind of where we were going with that. Right. And I don't know that we've had any, I wouldn't say that we've had any negative experiences. We've had good experiences and we've had experiences, but I don't We've had non-starter experiences. Because, oh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because things have not gone Yes, that's smoothly. true. That's true. So that's just taught us to, you know, try to pick couples that are more, I guess, like us, because that seems to be what we're attracted to. Yes. So, yeah, you, you have to use those negative experiences, not as, you know, putting on the brakes and saying, okay, maybe we shouldn't be doing this, but as, okay, well, we won't do that again. We'll try it, you know, we'll try it differently or. Yes. Or back to the, uh, the, the point before is, is do something different because if you're only, if you have a profile and pictures and you're sitting at home waiting for somebody to call you and it's not working, then don't think, you know, that the lifestyle is not for you and that that's a negative experience. Just, okay, what's not working here? What do we need to do? And I have to say, as a little bit of a segue here, I'm really um, kind of honored, I guess, or flattered that several people have sent us their profiles and, and asked to, us to review and them. And asked us yeah. to review them from a, a, a you know, kind of a outside unbiased uh, opinion. And we do that. We're we're happy to do that if you if you really want the feedback. And and people have done that, and and we feel good uh, providing that. But also, you need to understand that the profile is only one small part of being in the lifestyle. Get out. Go to the meet and greets. Go to these other things. Right. And, you know, turn these experiences into uh, growth opportunities. So we're going to move on to the last part of this, which is actually... The fun part. The fun part. Yeah, playtime. Playtime. Okay, Mrs. Jones, what would um, what would you have told us a year and a half ago? Well, the first and foremost rule is that you need to communicate your expectations and boundaries, especially to your partner. Um, but also to the other couple or single or whoever you're playing with, you need to make sure everybody understands what your boundaries are because you don't want to be facing something that you're not comfortable with mid play because then that's just like a bucket of ice water dropped on the bed, you know, and, and once the sexy fun starts, you don't want to have to, you know, kind of be the one to, to blow the whistle and say, I, I don't want to do this. And if, and if you communicate, you can avoid that. Things are going to come up and, and that might have to happen. But you know, the, the more that everybody understands what everybody's expectation is, the less likely, you know, something. And we have this communication every single time we are going to go out no matter what. Between the two of us, you mean? Yes, Yes. ahead of time. Yeah. Well, even when we went to the meet and greet last week, I said, are you bringing the sex bag? And you said, well, it's just a meet and greet. I said no. And you said, I don't think we should ever leave without the sex bag. Right. Right. That's like going hunting and leaving your ammunition at home. (laughs) It was a meet and greet. We were in a public bar. All I'm saying is you always have to be prepared because you never know. Even though you have no expectations, we have to have that conversation every time we go out like, okay, our assumption is nothing's going to happen, but we're only half of the equation. What if the assumption is on the other side, something differently? And that's why it's up to you as a couple to say, if the other couple doesn't say it, and sometimes you may assume that, well, they have more experience than us, so it's up to them to really bring this up. No, that's kind of a cop out. If if the, if there's if you're moving to playtime and nobody's talked, then it's your responsibility to say, um, before we go any further, have we talked about you know what 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 are you all comfortable with, and and here's what we're comfortable with. Okay, Mr. Jones, on a scale of one to five, how how well do we do this? Um, well, we're with, with other, I'm talking about with other couples. I think we're pretty good. I, I think we're probably at a three and a half. Okay, that's average. <laughs> No, I I would say three max. I think we could do a better job with this. So, yeah, we need to preach to the choir here. Well, we're talking to old Mr. and Mrs. Jones, not new Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Yeah, but new, (laughs) I'm talking about current day Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Well, we used to be a zero. Yeah, okay, so we're up to a three. 
Yeah. You say 3.5. Yeah, and and normally it's with people that we've played with before because you have an assumption that you're right. That's where we get into trouble, right? Well, and and the other couples moving too. You know, you you can't like the whole no kissing rule. Remember? Oh, right. We were with a couple and we played with them and they had a no kissing rule, and then we got back together with them, and not only were they kissing, they were full swapping. So if you if you go into it assuming oh well last time we were with them that could have been two weeks ago or two months ago or two years ago, you you can't assume they're in the same place because you're fluid you're moving mm-hmm. forward in this so you've got to have the conversation and say okay here's what we're thinking and it's not just the conversation about where you are, it's a conversation about who you're with and where you are because yeah. you might be a full swap couple, but you might be with a couple who you're just comfortable soft swapping with. So that has to be discussed ahead of time. Right. All right. Uh, I think this next one was one that got your blood boiling a little bit. You, (laughs) you, not your partner, are responsible for communicating your desires and boundaries. Yes. So what do you mean by that, Mrs. Jones? The first time we ran into that was our very, very, very first trip to desire when we didn't know what we were doing at all. And um, the couple that we hung out with all week, he kept saying to you, you know, my wife would really like it if you would blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, and, and she would be like at the restroom and the three of us would be standing in the pool. And that used to, that drove you crazy. It did. Because you wanted her to tell you. And, and honestly, to his credit, he was not saying anything that wasn't true. Um, she was a very reserved lady, very classy, reserved lady. Um, she wasn't quiet, but she just wasn't very, um, outgoing and expressing that, her that's, desires. That's not what I complained about. What my fear was, was not that she didn't want what he was saying, but if I were her, I would want to know that. I wanted to be with her because I wanted to be with her and not because her husband tried to talk me into being with her. Mm. That's not because I believed what he was saying, but I'm coming at it from her point of view is if I would have walked over there then and kissed her, then I think if I were her, I'd be thinking, okay, did he not want to kiss me? And because he suggested that he kissed me, you know, that's why it's got to come from, you know, that you've got to be your own advocate. Right. Right. So no matter what, no matter your level of experience, what you're don't let your spouse be the one that has to do the communication for you because guess what? Y- y- okay, ladies, you're going to trust your husband to read your mind <laughs> <laughs> and say to the other guy or the other woman, um, I don't think she likes this right now. I'd get slapped up across the head. You'd say, that's not, I, I'm having an orgasm. That's why I couldn't talk. There'd be some <laughs> right. reason why. That's right. Right. So, so I, uh, that, you know, I've learned that uh, just in general marriage <laughs> 101 is that you've got to speak for yourself and I can kind of pick up on your body language, but I shouldn't be talking. Now I could stop and say, honey, are, are you, you okay? Are you okay? Are yes. you comfortable? Right. And tell me with the other person within earshot. Right. And that might take the pressure off of you, but it's got to come from you. I can't make that judgment call for you and neither can you for me. Right. All right. We're on the same page with that one. Good. All right. Move at the pace of the slowest of the group or the couple. Right. And this is a little bit different than moving together at the same pace as a couple that we talked about earlier. This is move at the pace of the slowest. And you know, slowest is really not the best word. Um, the softest or yeah, I don't know. I mean, how do you say that? Whatever is the least common denominator, right? You know, whatever play, um, style, style it, everyone agrees on, let's say it that way, whatever play style everyone can agree on is the style you need to go to. And when you do that, when we've done that, we have had the most fun, right? Full swap, soft swap, uh, parallel play, girl, girl, whatever it is. That's the most fun because I can't tell you the satisfaction that we get when another couple says to us, we're so glad that we met you as one of our first couples because you all made us feel comfortable and you had a good time and we didn't feel any pressure. 
And guess what that We've is? We've broken in a few newbies. <laughs> I know. I know. But what, guess what they don't know? What? That really puts us in a good position for next time. I know. Yeah. So we lure them in with That's this right. false sense of trust That's and right. security. <laughs> and then the real Mr. and Mrs. Jones come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll edit that out. <laughs> All right. One more. Are you going to take this one? This is easy. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Because playing is fun. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if there are tears, if there's anxiety afterwards, if somebody's feeling guilty. Um, then just slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing it wrong. And you need to, and you need to back up to the very beginning of, of this episode. <laughs> you know what I said when we went to Desire the first time? And we hadn't even really, you know ever ever done anything in the lifestyle i said i'd rather come home from desire regretting something that we didn't do than regretting something that we did do and i still feel that to this day if we're not really sure about it let's not do it and come home saying man i wish we would have you know acted upon that but for whatever reason that little that little red flag goes up or the hairs on the back of your neck stand up or whatever and and um Maybe that's not the night for that. And the reason this is the last one is because if, here's what the lifestyle can be. You know, we are not certified in anything. No, we're not. (laughs) We have no credibility. In case you haven't figured that out yet. (laughs) But what we've learned is if you're not having fun, there's an underlying issue. Yeah. And that underlying issue, you may not be able to put your finger on what it is, but there is an issue. And it doesn't mean you have to get out of the lifestyle it doesn't mean that you have to get a divorce. It doesn't mean you have to go back to square one. What it means is there's something there and there's an opportunity for the two of you and as an individual work through. And when you do that, who needs marriage counseling? Because you've in effect rooted that out on your own and you've brought it to light and you've identified it and you've, as a couple, you've worked through that and then you go back and try it again. So, and, and that's really the indicator. If you're not having fun, then you're probably not taking it at the right pace or you're not, uh, you, need, you need to pause. And, and so when we say you're doing it wrong, there's no umbrella of right way to do it. It's everybody has their own way or, or their own thing. But so that, that goes, I guess this brings it like all the way back to the beginning. Yes. You have to decide what you want out of it as a couple and then, you know, go after that and just experience that and have fun with that. And then once you figure that out, maybe you can take a baby step right. and try something new and that will, that will keep it fun right? and, and that, take the stress out of it. And if you go back to our very first one, it was decide what you as a couple want from the lifestyle. So if you're not having fun, go back to question number one, save episode 15. <laughs> and play it again. And play it again. <laughs> And get to there and stop and pause. And, and, you, and this is where communication comes back in. You have to be honest with yourself. And if you're not, you can't blame, you can't be honest with your spouse until you're honest with yourself. Yeah. So talk out loud. Instead of listening to the little voices in your head, let them out and just talk. Sometimes Mr. Jones and I will be talking and something will come out of my mouth and I'll think in my, inside my head, what the hell did I just say? I mean, like, I won't even like think about it and then decide to tell Mr. Jones, I'll just be talking and it'll just come out and I'll be like, Hey, I just figured something out about myself. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you just have to think out loud and to your spouse. And then all of a sudden, you know, you'll start understanding, you know, what it is that you want out of the lifestyle or what you're feeling or, or what's holding you back, you know, so it talk, 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 talk. Yeah, and so, then you have good sex, good sex, good sex. Amen. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Yes. So we we really um, are excited about this episode because of the feedback and because of the you know the the you've been telling us a lot about yourselves and it really you know we're not asking you to give us topic ideas. We're asking you to share with your share yourselves with us, and if enough of you do that, we'll be able to come up with a way to talk about, you know, some of the issues and topics that come up. And and that's what, you know, that's why I was really happy about this episode because um, it was the feedback that we got from people that kind of pointed us in this direction. So, you know, people say that 
they have stuff in common with us, but we read their emails and we're like, oh my gosh, we have stuff in common with them because we're still learning too. And we're still blundering and, and miscommunicating. And, you know, I, and we sound all suave and together when we have these microphones in front of us, but we still have, you know, things that come up and issues and I sound suave. Well, when you're not being a blockhead, yes, you can be very suave or sarcastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, well, that wraps up our topic for episode 15, If We Only Knew Then What We Knew Now. So when we get back, Mrs. Jones, you just have a few seconds to think up of a good snapshot. Oh, boy, I'm under pressure. I know. snapshots and we want to thank you for we, you all keep sending us emails and some of you tag on snapshots to the bottom and just as a decla- disclaimer if you send us an email and you say here's my snapshot i'm we're assuming that it's okay to share this unless you say don't don't share this right and we'll make sure that we're discreet and we don't well yeah when names. we read them if there's any names and we'll take the names out or anything about location so right. we'll keep it generic how's this for generic so the, um, we're going to share two with from our listeners and then we're going to share our own own snapshots and this is from a couple from tennessee one of our neighboring states to the very very south and western tip of virginia so you mentioned other couples snapshots and i thought we would share my favorite desire snapshot oh so many desire snapshots i know (laughs) While we had been in the lifestyle for a short time, we had never gone fully nude around others unless going to play. So this was a new and nerve wracking experience for us. And we went through that too. No kidding. No matter what you read about desire, the moment of truth is when you have to take the britches off. Which is <laughs> down. So this was a new and nerve wracking experience for us, especially for the missus who was still not sure uh, of her body and she wasn't at the weight she wanted to be. We oh, just talked about here that. We go. Yeah, I but know. this is a good example of how to overcome that. It sure is. So we went in. We went in the summer when it was so hot, but we had gotten to know um, some of the people that were going to be there at the same time through a private Facebook page and weekly chat. When we got desire, it seemed like when we got to desire, it seemed like it was about 110 degrees, and our room wasn't ready. We met our new friends, hugged, and joined them by the pool. The missus did not want to take off any of her clothes yet, which I said was perfectly fine, through gritted teeth, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) And I would not take off any of mine through gritted teeth, but a good husband, although I swear I was melting in the heat. After about an hour, I went back to the lobby and checked to see if our room was ready. The lobby felt so nice and air conditioning that I didn't want to go back outside and the heat fully clothed, but trudged back outside in all of my clothes. But I was pleasantly surprised and somewhat shocked to find the missus not only topless and with her uh, only with her sarong on, but one of our new friends eating an, an ice cream sundae off of my wife's luscious breasts. I gave a mental cheer and thought to myself, Game on. And <laughs> it's going to be a good week. <laughs> and shucked my clothes seconds later. And that is what desire is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was a really great snapshot because I think everybody, maybe it doesn't happen that way, but everybody has that. I wonder what this is going to be like. Oh, yeah. Moment at yeah. desire. So thank you for our friends uh, from uh, Tennessee for sharing that. Um, they sent us this a few months ago, and we're just now getting around to it. But um, appreciate your patience, and thank you for sharing. So this snapshot is from the West Coast, and it starts out saying, so in my second double BJ, did I mention I got two? 
BJ I, meaning blowjob? Yes. Okay. I think this story is kind of picking up in the middle of playtime. Yes. Because we're already into the second blowjob. Yes. This guy's got a rough life. Okay. So in my second double BJ, did I mention I got two? My partner and I were playing with a couple she had played with previously. She and the wife of the couple decided that since her hubby and I had helped please them so well orally that they would team up and give her hubby and I each a double blowjob to completion. Their plan did not meet with any resistance. Anyway, I insisted that he go first. Such a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. At the prompting of his wife. I made that mistake once. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's right. You did. So at the prompting of his wife, I made a few helpful suggestions on their technique. She also told me to be thinking about what I wanted specifically when it was my turn. She was very explicit and naughty in describing what they were going to do to me, what they were going to do when I was about to come, et cetera, et cetera. That was amazingly hot in itself. I'll say, man. So anyway, the other gentleman said that he wanted to have them trade off with one sucking him while the other kissed him and let him fondle her breasts. Since I wasn't doing anything useful, I decided to give my lady friend's very responsive G-spot some attention while she was being kissed and fondled. I made her come fairly loudly, moaning into the gentleman's mouth as they were kissing. This sent him instantly over the top, and he too came. Okay, so let me clarify. So so she had the other guy's cock in her mouth, and this guy had his fingers inside of her, and when she came, she moaned with the other guy's cock in her mouth. Right. Oh, okay, got yeah. it. All right. So, yes, so then she came. And that sent the other guy instantly over the top. I bet. And then he came. Yeah. He la- the other guy later confirmed when he recovered his power of speech, which always takes you guys a while, Yeah, that this is what made him come. Very cool and very hot. Yeah, that's I a would good say one. so. Mm. Yeah, I know. That's, that's called the Hummer. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Especially when you know the other person's receiving pleasure and you got the vibration going on with the sucking and... Mm. Yeah. It's getting warm in here, Mr. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And you look pretty sexy in your We Got a Thing tank top. I do. Yeah. Mr. Jones and I got a, like, I got a tank top and he got a t shirt that we put our logo on for when we went to New Orleans this summer. So, yeah. That's my uniform for the night brings with my back, pomegranate martini. Brings back good memories. Yes. So, okay. My snapshot? Yes. Um, you know, I think I'm like 50, 50 on my snapshots as them being sexual and non-sexual. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really, um, this is really a, a non-sexual, well, of course it's sexual, but we, I, we mentioned that we went out to dinner with one of our listeners this past week and she was not with her husband. He, he, she was on a business trip, so we had no intention of, you know, doing any play. I was wondering if I was supposed to ask to bring my swinger bag. You know, the answer is always bring your swinger I bag. I didn't bring my swinger bag because you didn't tell me to. I mean, I... You didn't? I did not. We just had this conversation last week. <laughs> I know. Always. Am I going to have to be responsible for the swinger bag? Maybe so. Because just because we don't... You're the one that has the condoms in there. I'm good to go. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, there's always a 7-Eleven. That's right. Keep one in your wallet. Yeah. Anyway, the, in my mind, there was no expectation of play, uh, you know, okay. and, and we had corresponded and we were just meeting be- because we wanted to meet her and she wanted to meet us. And we were listening to her uh, talk and tell stories, which I think is part of the, one of the, my favorite, most favorite part of the lifestyle is just listen to other people tell stories. So if I could describe this um, woman, she's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has a long uh, brunette hair, um, uh, very professional looking, very articulate, um, dressed. She had a nice dress on, but it wasn't overly, you know, sexy. And we were having a nice conversation. And all of a sudden we started talking about play experiences. And she started talking about a couple that they met. And she said that her husband was really attracted to the woman and she really liked the other guy, but he was really <laughs> right. too nice. He was nice. And she said, and he was really nice. And she said, 
probably so nice that I would have punched him in the face if he <laughs> didn't, you know, handle me the right way. She was and kind of grinding her teeth when she was yes, saying Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> I know. She was grinding her teeth and her eyes got really like dark <laughs> and I could just feel the sexuality. I mean, here I'm like, this, this lady has got to be a dynamo uh, in bed because she started transforming right in front of me. And, and <laughs> I started, I mean, I felt it. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's really putting out that... <laughs> that vibe and just talking about this guy and and being nice and anyway it took me for a a loop i just you know it got really warm and you know i started perspiring and just just to watch so so the so the snapshot was watching this almost perfect stranger um very put together woman very beautiful but very also articulate professional you know, we're having a nice conversation. All of a sudden, she t- transformed into this um, person that I thought, oh my gosh, I imagine when she's in bed and she's engaged, she's probably really into it. Passionate. You know, passionate. That's yes. what it was. So the passion started to come out of oh, her. Oh, yes. And it was, uh, and then, and just as quickly as it was there, she kind of pulled it back in. And I'm not even sure if she realized that you know, that she did that, but oh my gosh. Well, you teased her about it because we were texting with her after dinner on our way home and, yeah. and you were teasing her about it. Yeah. And, and made me think, cause I'm a pretty nice guy, you know, and I'm pretty soft, but yes. I'm going to have to look for yeah. opportunities. I think I'm going to take that as the lessons learned. I don't want to <laughs> get punched in the face. <laughs> you don't want to be labeled the nice guy. No, huh? I don't No. <laughs> if you want it hard, tell me. That's right. Somehow. I think I would have picked up with her because she's sending that vibe. Yeah, she, it was clear. She's making it clear what she liked without saying it. And boy, when somebody's like that, that's a that's a superpower. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So anyway, that's my snapshot, Mrs. Jones. So my snapshot's pretty predictable, but I can't help it. It was so much fun. So at the house party that we went to, um, we already told you that we did this three-couple massage ten handed yeah the ten handed massage and um when I was laying on the table I guess I started out on my back right Mm -mm. no you started out on your stomach did I ever flip over onto my back yes because that's when you almost had an orgasm oh really I thought I was on my back see it's all a blur no you always once I get horny I can't remember you always start a sensual massage laying on your stomach or it wouldn't never get to the stomach oh right yeah on my stomach you were massaging my back Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it started on my back and that was lovely. I love having my back rubbed. I especially, I always really like my shoulders and my neck. So the next day my hair was a greasy mess and you can't really like explain that to anybody. Why is your hair so greasy? You don't need to. (laughs) No, you just need to wash it again the next day. Right. Well, when you have like 10 hands, 50 fingers running through your, you know, in your neck and in your hair, it, it tends to get a little greasy. So anyway, started out there and then, then y'all flipped me over onto my back and, and then the total overload started, you know, having all those hands on me. And and we had this new couple, um, that participated as well. And, you know, I, and I thought that they're so attractive and they were so much fun to talk to, you know, and they really didn't know how comfortable they were participating. But, um, I think they both they they both were touching me right yeah he was he i I was at your feet yeah he i think he was on my leg he was on your left leg and then she was on your left side of your torso and then the other woman was on your other side and the gentleman was behind your head right right so it was just so sensual to have all those hands on me and i intentionally kept my eyes closed because i didn't know want to know whose hands were whose but then eventually you know, people started playing with my breasts and then there were, fem- and I knew they were feminine fingers. There were feminine fingers between my legs. And so I would just lay there and imagine who was touching me. And I was kind of hoping it was the new girl that was touching me, but you know, I figured it probably wasn't. And I, and I, and I know now that it was our friend cause I did take a peek at one point. <laughs> yeah. But when I took that peek and I opened my eyes and I mean, everybody around that massage table, they were just, everybody was beautiful. I mean, the men were handsome and the ladies were gorgeous. And, 
And it was just like, wow, you know, this is so like, like indulgent, you know, to lay there and just receive that pleasure. That was so much fun. Yeah, that would have been my second snapshot because I'll tell you what was extremely hot about that. The new couple, she had a, a bra and a panty set on, which I think is the most sexy lingerie there is. And she didn't take it off right. because I don't think, you know, she was completely comfortable doing that. She never made it up onto the massage table. so Right. But I think because I just got turned on by the fact that she had clothes on. Mm -hmm. because there's something left to the imagination. You know, it's just mysterious, intriguing, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'd really like to rip that off. Um, but she had, and it was a beautiful, I mean, she's beautiful to begin with. Yes. And then she had that bra and panties on. And, and so I, from my perspective, down at your feet, I was able to look at everything, the whole playing field. And, and again, back to my excuse for not lasting long, but. Anyway. So, um, Almond oil is an excellent massage oil. Just, I mean, we've, we've been big fans of coconut oil, but the, the almond oil was awesome. And, um, yes. Ooh. Yeah. So that was, that whole party was a great snapshot. It was. Yeah. So gosh, we've gone pretty long tonight, but we had a lot to talk about. So I'm sorry about that. Um, so what do we have before we close? What do we have coming up? Well, we, the same couple, they're coming over tomorrow night. Yeah. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Yeah. A bottle of wine, good conversation. Yep. So hopefully um, they'll feel comfortable and we'll get to know them better. Yes. And then we've got the Halloween party on Saturday night. And that's just going to be craziness. Yeah. And then we've got a couple of dates lined up. So all of a sudden, oh, you know what? I should confess. You know, I told everyone that we got our personal profile. We took it down off of SLS. Yes, we did. It's gone. Well, uh, we just got a new one on Alt Playground, APG. And we didn't seek that out, but we have some close friends in the lifestyle who recommended that we get on that. Because what we missed about SLS was just not being able to keep up with local events. And APG is a much better website. I think it's much more modern. And so we're... We don't have a we got a thing presence there yet, but we have a, a personal um, APG. So we're back on two websites now. We've met some people through that website. Yeah, and, we've met some new couples, yeah. and um, we're pretty excited. We're actually going out to dinner next week. Next Thursday, we're going to Yeah, we're with gonna, a couple. Yep, yep. So, yeah, so we'll have plenty to talk about um, next month, I'm sure, and keeping yes. up with the Joneses. So uh, before we go, we want to thank you. We've got a few more reviews on iTunes, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, we've really we've got a few ways that you can contact us. Um, and if you're on our Cassidy community, you already knew when we were going to send this podcast out because the Cassidy community is where I put um, like a week ago when we started getting close to being a month away. I said, okay, we're going to podcast this week, and we'll publish. So if you're on Cassidy and you haven't joined our community, you might want to do that because you, you'll get an advance notice of when the next podcast is coming out. You haven't tweeted it yet, though. No, I, you know what? Twitter is a little bit different. Twitter is a different animal. Um, I probably, I only tweet out when we've posted an episode just oh, to let okay. everybody know. But because the Cassidy community, I feel, is a little more intimate. There, there are folks that have chosen to connect with us directly because of our podcast. And right. so that's my priority. I we'll communicate with that group first. Um, so thank you for joining our Cassidy community. Um, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at we got a thing and uh, you can leave comments on our website. Our website is we got a thing.com, but we would really prefer if you're going to contact us to use our email and that's we got a thing at gmail.com. And we got a thing is all one word W E G O T T A T H I N G at gmail.com. So feel free to continue to email us. We've developed some really solid long distance relationships with. Uh, I mean, I, like friendships. Yes, I mean, yeah. it just keeps going back and forth. Yeah, we know each other by name and, um, you know, we've corresponded back and forth. And then there are people who email us once and then they'll email us a few months later. And then there's people that email us one time and, and whatever that is, I, again, I just want to say we appreciate you taking the time. We have gotten some really thoughtful 
messages, and we appreciate so much that you're trusting us to share a little bit about yourselves and about your relationships, because it really does help us to know. And we had originally said, well, we're going to podcast for the first year, you know, and just see how it goes. And uh, because of the response that we've been getting and and the relationships that we're building across, um, you know, this has turned into a lot more than we imagined. So, um, I think we might keep going. We're having fun. Yeah. Yeah, we're We're going to keep going. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, We are Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and we got a thing. What's your thing?